Hi, I'm Song Michael Xie, and I'm presenting our work Understanding and Mitigating the Trade-Off Between Robustness and Accuracy, joint work with Aditi Raghunathan, Fanny Yang, John Ducci, and Percy Liang at Stanford University. The presence of adversarial examples is commonly used to show that standard training leads to models that are not robust. Here, an image of a panda plus a small, carefully chosen perturbation results in the model predicting Gibbon with high confidence. Adversarial training is a popular approach for improving robustness by augmenting adversarial examples to the data set on the fly. The table here shows the robust accuracy of standard training versus an adversarial training method on CIFAR-10. The robust accuracy is the percentage of test examples misclassified after an L-infinity bounded adversarial perturbation. Adversarial training improves the robust accuracy significantly, as you can see from the table. However, standard accuracy, which is on the unperturbed examples, drops by about 10%. So why is there a trade-off between robustness and accuracy? After all, we only augmented with more data. Prior works have given us some hypotheses for this trade-off. One is that the optimal predictor is itself not robust to adversarial perturbations meaning that the perturbations can change the true target or label. For example, if the adversary could perturb the image of a 0 to a 9, the classifier would have to pick between accuracy, which would say that the image is actually a 9, versus robustness to perturbations, which would want to keep the original label, which is 0. Another hypothesis is that perturbations make the learning problem more complex. And the hypothesis class is just not expressive enough. For example, we may start with the data set that's easily separable by a linear classifier. But after some perturbations, the data set requires a more complex nonlinear classifier to fit. These prior hypotheses suggest a trade-off even in the infinite data limit which suggests that the trade-off is inherent. Now, however, typical perturbations are chosen to be imperceptible so that robustness should be possible. And we typically use highly expressive neural networks that reach 100% standard and robust accuracy on tasks like CIFAR. Thus, we assume a more realistic setting where the perturbations are consistent, meaning that they cannot change the true target or the label. We also assume that the model family is well specified. Our empirical observations also support the setting where there is no trade-off with infinite data. In CIFAR, we observe that the gap between the robust and standard accuracies are large in the small data regime, and then it decreases with more labeled data. In this paper, we ask, if we assume that perturbations are consistent and that the model family is well specified, such that there is no inherent trade-off, then why do we observe a trade-off between robustness and accuracy in practice? As an overview, we characterize how training with consistent extra data can increase standard error, even in well-specified noiseless linear regression. Our analysis suggests that the recent robust self-training algorithm can mitigate this trade-off. We prove that robust self-training improves the robust error without hurting the standard error therefore eliminating the trade-off in the linear setting using unlabeled data. Empirically, RST improves both robust and standard error across different adversarial training algorithms and perturbation types. 
So here's our noiseless linear regression setup. It assumes that the model, the true model, is linear in the features with true parameters theta star so that we're in the well-specified setting. The standard data, which is x standard and y standard, consists of n examples in d dimensions with d larger than n so that we're in the over-parameterized regime. The extra data, x extra, which are the adversarial examples, are labeled consistently with their true targets, y extra. We study minimum norm interpolants. The standard estimator, which is in blue, is the minimum L2 norm solution that fits the standard data. The augmented estimator, which is in orange, additionally has to fit the extra data. Notice that the constraints only constrain the estimators on the span of their respective training data. And the min norm objective is an inductive bias that chooses a solution from among the feasible set. The standard error is the parameter error, which is the difference between the estimated uh, parameters data and the true parameters data star scaled by the population covariance sigma. With these ingredients, we can take a look at an example of when extra data hurts standard error. As min norm interpolants in a noiseless setting, the estimators recover data star exactly in the span of their training data. Therefore, the error comes from the null space of the training data. So suppose the null space of the training data is E1 and E2, the standard bases. We plotted this null space with theta star projected into the null space. Theta standard, which is in blue, has zero component in this null space. This is because it fits theta star on the span of X standard but is otherwise unconstrained. And thus the minimum norm inductive bias is to choose a solution with zero component in the null space of X standard. Now suppose the augmented estimator fits one extra point X EXT. There is still one additional null space direction even after augmenting the standard data with X EXT. The augmented estimator in orange fits theta star in the x axt direction and has zero component otherwise due to being a min norm interpolant. The parameter error vectors of both of these interpolants, which is the difference between the estimated parameters and the two parameters theta star, are shown with dashed lines. Notice that the augmented estimator has a higher error component in the E2 direction, although the parameter error vector has overall a smaller norm. We see that if the population covariance sigma has high weight in the E2 direction, meaning that errors in the E2 direction are more costly, then the augmented estimator will have higher error overall when scaled with sigma. Our paper gives an exact characterization of when the trade-off occurs in the noiseless linear regression setting. So how do we mitigate the increase in error while also fitting the extra data? Suppose that we know the, cover uh, the population covariance sigma has a high weight on E2. We've plotted again the standard estimator and theta star in the null space of the standard data. The space of solutions that fit the extra point x ext are shown in gray. These solutions consist of the min norm augmented estimator plus a component in the null space of the augmented data. Then, out of the space of solutions that fit the extra data, we can choose to regularize towards the standard estimator especially in the E2 component, to ensure that the error in costly directions do not change too much 
from the standard estimator. This is helpful, especially if the standard estimator already has good standard error, as is the case with ever so robustness. So if we do this, the error on the E2 component now matches that of the standard estimator while simultaneously fitting the extra data XXT. So how do we implement this without knowing the population covariance sigma? The idea is to use unlabeled data to estimate sigma, guiding which directions to regularize more. We show that this procedure is exactly robust self-training in our favor. Robust self-training, or RST, is a recent semi-supervised algorithm that can be applied on top of existing adversarial training methods. First, given some labeled examples, RST performs adversarial training with a standard and a robust component of the loss. Here, adversarial examples XADV are our extra data. And given some unlabeled examples, RST first trains a standard predictor on only the labeled data and then uses it to pseudo-label the unlabeled data. In addition to the labeled component of the algorithm, RST also performs adversarial training on the pseudo-labeled data as well with a standard and a robust component. We've proved in our paper that not only can RST eliminate the trade-off in our simple example from before, RST always improves both the standard and the robust errors, generally in the noiseless linear regression setting, therefore eliminating the trade-off. Empirically, RST mitigates the trade-off in adversarial training with both trades and the projected gradient or PGAT variance. While both trades and PGAT decrease the standard accuracy, applying RST to these methods improves both the standard and robust accuracies. Additionally, just applying a semi-supervised method on top of adversarial training does not improve the standard accuracy. Now, what about the case where adversarial training does not hurt standard error? Does it still help? We find that RST also mitigates the trade-off across different perturbation types, including adversarial rotations and translations that do not hurt the standard error. Even in this case, RST improves both the standard and the robust accuracy. So to recap, we characterize the trade-off in noiseless linear regression in the more realistic setting of consistent perturbations that cannot change the true target, and where the hypothesis class is well specified, meaning that there is no trade-off with infinite data. We show the effect of inductive bias in causing a trade-off with finite data. In particular, the min-norm inductive bias should be adapted to the data distribution. Intuitively, having some unlabeled data should help here. We proved that using unlabeled data via robust self-training, we can indeed mitigate the trade-off in noiseless linear regression. We also showed empirically across various adversarial training algorithms and perturbation types that robust self-training mitigates the trade-off. Thanks for listening. And here are some of the people and organizations that we'd like to thank for their support.